What's happening? Welcome to On The One. Today we're gonna talk about my tune, Acceptance, a guitar anthem on my new album, The Lucky One. So if you're not familiar with the song, here's a little bit of what it sounds like. All right, this is one that I'm gonna break down. I'll show you everything that's in the session, the way that we orchestrated it, the way that I arranged it, how I mixed it and all that kind of stuff, but also kind of what the vision for the song was. This is something that, it's a melody that I had in my mind for a while, a guitar melody. And to be honest, most of the music that I write comes from a groove or rhythm section thing first, but this was a melody that was just floating around in my head for a couple months. Then eventually I started putting music to it, started playing it a little bit, I could not figure out the B section for the longest time. I had three or four different B sections and outros and all kinds of things. And I just, I couldn't figure it out. Four to six weeks later. Okay, so we were editing this video and I realized I should probably tell the story and vision of this song a little bit more. So here we are a month later, the room looks different. Yeah, look, we're remodeling, fun. Anyways, the story of this song is really a love song. It's like an instrumental love song, which I don't know a lot of, but it's also kind of hard to do. I was thinking it needs to be more than a love song. It should have a deeper vision. It should have a deeper meaning. And I found it in the oddest place, a sci-fi movie. Now, this movie Arrival, a lot of people see it as a sci-fi movie, but actually it's this beautiful story of love and loss and pain and connection and communication that, I don't know, I just really connected with. I saw it and then I had to watch it like two other times. It kind of gave me the idea of accepting what love is and how love is different and pain being a part of love and all the amazing, beautiful experiences being a part of love and that it's not always so straightforward for everybody, which was kind of an interesting thing to be wrapped into a sci-fi movie. And you know, love looks different for you than it does for me and all people's relationships look different. So I found a little bit of a deeper meaning than just an instrumental love song. It's more about just accepting love in general and what it looks like for different situations. So a lot of this song really reflects the beauty and magic of love, but it also has moments where it really cries out when it gets hard or when things are painful things like that. And of course, it's not always about romantic love either. It's like family relationships and friendships as well. So that was really kind of the overarching vision for this one. Like I said, I worked on this song for a while. Tried to figure it out. I had two different drummers drum on it. I had my friend Jordan Rose track on it when, when it had the other B section and other parts of it. And it just, there was so many parts of it that didn't work because of the composition. And then when I sent it back to him, he was on tour with Theo. I got my friend Aaron Sterling to play drums on it. So what you will see in this session is Aaron Sterling's drums, Aaron Sterling's percussion, my bass guitar. You'll see that there's a different bass recording for the B section because <laughs> the B section was written later. It was recorded at a different time, at least the bass part. There's piano that was recorded by James Francis at Sear Sound in New York City. There's a Wurlitzer that was Kevin Gastongue and a B3 of his that got muted apparently. We can explore that. I don't, why did I mute it? I, I probably, I don't know, whatever. My main guitar part, my lead guitar stuff with the harmonies and the solo. My guitar fills, little stuff there. Guitar comping, rhythm guitars. Textural guitars here. These ones I also recorded at Sear Sound in New York City. Woodwinds. Michael Nelson arranged for horns and strings on this. So the woodwinds, all the flutes and clarinets are Kenny Holman and bass clarinet. Trumpet, piccolo trumpet, flugelhorns is Jay Webb. Trombone and flugabone is Michael Nelson. The string section on this, it's my friend Avery Bright, who did all the violins and violas. And Kara Fox did the cellos. So we sent charts to Avery and Kara and they did this stuff remotely. Actually, everything here was done remotely except the stuff in New York that I did with James. I wanted a real piano and I wanted to be there and I had a bunch of stuff I was taking care of at the time that I wanted to be there for. So we can dive into this. Speaking of this B section, I tried writing it three times. I couldn't figure it out. 
I sent it to my friend Alex Bone, who plays sax in my band a lot. I said, what do you got? I sent him a recording of this and I just muted everything in the B section. And I said, where are you hearing this go? And he said, well, I hear kind of three different things. Ooh, number two. Let's talk about that one. Okay, let's do this. All right, what if you change this melody note to this? Ooh, let's resolve to this chord. Let's change this sort of thing. Just adding in some extra chord changes so it's not so down the middle. It seemed a little bit simple as far as the chord progression goes because it's this four, three, two, one thing in the A section most of the time. So he kind of helped me discover some options for things that would add some interesting harmonic development and things that I could build off of for the ending of the song. I like to organize my sessions starting with the drums, percussion, bass, going down. I'm going to talk through these things in that order. Do I have a lot of plugins on this session? Eh, kind of a plugin heavy session. Don't come at me about the auto tunes. There's a couple things in there that just had some slight tuning things that got automated on, automated off. Don't come at me, okay? They're just, every once in a while, they turn on. Because the horns weren't all recorded in the same room with the strings, normally if they were done in the same room, they would have adjusted to each other. They didn't have the opportunity to adjust and mold to each other. So I'm doing it here. Don't come at me. That would have been done in the room. Look at me giving these disclaimers. I don't need to, I don't need the disclaimer. Here's Aaron's drums. They sound great. He sent me a picture of how he was blending all the mics together and where he had them panned. And I just put it in and let it go. He labels some of these mics after his favorite authors. You can see down here. And <laughs> I actually called him. I was like, you got this one mic on negative infinity. Did you just choose an author that you hate and chose to mute them? Like, is this is your subconscious way of, of muting this author from existence? And you let these other authors be at negative 4.9 and you, you rate your... That wasn't the case. I thought that would be a funny thing and it seems like something Aaron might do, but it was just, this is what felt appropriate for this song. Pretty cool. Later in, it gets a little bigger. Cool. Notice that? Very close to the grid, but still human. That's what we like. No editing on that one. Here's some percussion that he put in there. Was that a little spring verb on there? That's cool. That's fun. Uh, supports the back beats there. Let's let's listen to those two just together. Oh, one thing you can notice here, you can even just see it visually. The percussion comes in at certain spots to really help frame and put fence posts around the sections of the song. So I can tell he's thinking about the arrangement and how to help form the arrangement. Great session players do this sort of thing where they try to see the arrangement and help really give definition to the arrangement through the parts and layers that they add. All right, this bass part, where is that bass? It's at my house. It's strung upside down, Sunny T style. There's this harmonics thing that I did where I play this harmonics thing, but because of the way that, the, that it's strung upside down, it's like easy to play this harmonics line where it's really hard for me to do it backwards. So whenever I play this song on the bass, I have to play it just for my own technical ability on an upside down bass. I don't know why. It's this little line here. I'm doing harmonics with the low notes. This one.
Got a reverb on the bass. What a bold mix move, Corey. I felt like it needed it. Kind of cool. Got this Valhalla vintage verb. Look at that. Just bass right in. Stereo, though, that I must have pulled this over from Logic. I think I recorded the bass part into Logic for the demo and then just imported it in here. It's just a stereo track. I don't know. X click just to take some of the out of there. And then this other bass part. Little too much fret noise for my taste when I'm listening to it soloed like this, but I don't care. If it There's a little bit of a supporting role at the end for the orchestration, and then it comes in for the ending. But the bass part, really the fun thing there is that harmonics line that is hard for me to play on a regular bass, but when it's strung upside down, I can do it no problem. I don't know why, whatever. Piano. James Francis, I got hip to James. Some both with Pat Metheny, trio, and with Yeba. That wow, this cat can hang with Yeba and Metheny. Something special going on there. And I checked out all of his music. Then finally, just really wanted a good excuse to work with him. There was a, a handful of songs on the new record that I wanted real piano on, and brought him in. So there's a pair of mics on the inside and a pair of mics on the outside. I'm just pulling a little bit off of them and then I have the Wolf Comp on. It's not heavy, but it does sound like it's doing some lifting, doesn't it? Let's later on, you can hear what he's... Uh... Here's with it on. Beautiful sound, beautiful touch and playing. Yeah, we blended a couple things in there. It's just super cool. And at the end, he added some of this. Really textural stuff. could hear at the end there I automated a bit of a shimmer bus like a shimmer reverb to just kind of add put them out into space a little bit at the ending just kind of push them away pull the camera back a little bit I guess is kind of how I how I visualize that really nice though simple playing and little fills added in here and there which I think to me added some some nice momentum other keyboards really simple whirly part just to add some of that low mid-range This is Kevin's Whirly. Just to add a little bit, B3, this sucker got muted. What was going on here? Why didn't I like this guy? Oh, it's not a real B3, that's why. That's fake, you can tell right away. Bruh. Come on, Kevin, you giving me the gizzards? got a B3 at home. How come you didn't record a real one? It does sound pretty good though for a, for a B3 patch. I think with everything else being so organic and so real, I just didn't want anything fake in there. Maybe that was part of it. I'll come back to the lead guitar. The guitar comping, very simple, very simple. I recorded these both, hard pan left and right. 
default patch on the Archetype Cory Wong plugin. And then I added some of these little fills in there. Just little cutesy stuff to add to the arrangement. Some textural guitars in there, just to add a little bit of a thing. Some really, really light acoustic guitars that were doubled left and right. And honestly, I have great guitars that I should have used for this, but I totally forgot to bring them to New York with me. I just used whatever house acoustic guitar was there at Searsound. Just strum with my thumb, just to give it a little thing. It didn't really matter, it's, it's more about what is the texture. Let's see what the other textural guitars are. What is this, U2? It's U2 without the delay. <laughs> Pull up. Light textual, just barely in there. Lead guitar, what do we got going on here? This is the Cory Wong signature strap right in to the Wong compressor into the amp snob right here. Valhalla vintage verb, I love this reverb. Oh yeah, and I have, I can hear that. Got a little bit of the shimmer verb from the archetype Corey Wong. You can hear that top, that top shimmery thing. man the mayor influence that brah. all of us man we're all influenced now here we go harmony guitar harmony second a section basically the same thing guitar harmony and then add a third harmony later in it put this volume pedal use. Sounded like this music my grandma used to listen to back in the day. For whatever, there's like this music that I, I remember hearing growing up, my grandma's house that had this sort of like, just the way you shake them. It's, it's interesting, it's like a cool sound. Meditation 
guitar solo preset, putting in work. First position on here. Back to the volume pedal idea. Here I wanted to play that A section melody, just really soar out. This is like that moment of acceptance. It's like where it hurts the most. Guitar anthem, you know, I had to go for it. There were rumors that Corey Wong does not play lead guitar. I had to put those to rest a little bit. Not because I got anything to prove, but because I did feel like this album was the right one for me to start playing a little more lead guitar. That's all. You want to know where things get real fun is when you orchestrate around the guitar. Now, this is something really cool that Michael Nelson my horn arranger, had started doing with Prince a bunch before Prince died. I've heard a bunch of these recordings. A lot of them are actually not out right now. I wish I could play them. I wish Michael was here with his laptop right now. He could play you these recordings. They're so insane. Where there'd be these songs that Prince recorded and he'd play these epic guitar anthem guitar solos. And then he told Michael, just arrange with my guitar solo. And they had a bunch of these things. Literally had like full orchestras going into Paisley Park recording all this stuff winds, brass, saxes, because Michael separates woodwinds from saxes, whatever. Strings, all, all this stuff. He had full orchestral arrangements, orchestral percussion, everything built around these guitar solos. And he's always trying to pitch me on the idea of doing that because it's such a cool sound. And it's when the time is right, absolutely. So here we have some woodwinds and I'll, I'll get into how we did all that stuff. So... That's all Kenny Holman there. We have some trumpet. All the brass stuff is Michael Nelson and Jay Webb. We'll get into this. Just want you to hear a little bit. Strings. Sounds that good. You're not gonna do it. Sorry, my, my energy there did not match the energy of this song. Apologize for that outburst, but I get really excited when I hear dope music. fun real strings come on tough to bring on the road tough to mic a live string section on the road temperamental instruments as a whole you know some instruments are just hard to travel with they're hard in different climates they're hard to mic a lot of feedback hard to get to sit right studio woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo. so let's just let's just get with the orchestration here let's get winds brass and strings so you can hear a little bit of what's happening here's that second a section so now let's hear that just with the guitar melodies you can hear that he's arranging with my guitars supportive
Check this out though. When he starts arranging with the guitar solo stuff, when we start getting into it together, it is so dope. It just, it adds this, just tucked in there. It, it all of a sudden gives the guitar this, this, this feeling of reverence also. It's like this guitar anthem, the moment of the song and the meaning of the song. Like all of a sudden this orchestration comes and it, it feels like it has all of a sudden just a more triumphant thing because there's, it, it feels so much more purposeful. It's like, this is supposed to be there. And you want to know how, how supposed to be there it is? We built an entire orchestration around it. So let me, let me pull the guitar out of there so now you can just hear how that is with just, just the orchestration. Calling the guards now. Jay Webb, here we go. So all of that, all the orchestration and all of the arrangement helps propel the guitar solo forward. Now all of a sudden my solo has so much more meaning to it. It has so much more intentionality. And the fact that Jay's coming in, piccolo trumpet up there. Here, here, here it is now in context. It's, it's so fun. I don't know if you're having as much fun as I am, but I love listening to this because hearing, this is the genius of Michael Nelson. Cat's insane. Here we go. So you've got that, that main lead guitar line, and then all of a sudden the flugels are covering this stuff, this counter line in the bottom. That's just, it adds so much of a... That in there behind just that soaring, screaming, pouring your heart guts out. This is so cool. Now let's dive into this outro. I was gonna do the move where it all drops out to piano. I already did that. I played that card with the song Ellie. That's what I do. I, I think that's a fun thing to do after a big epic moment. Break down, yeah, and then break down to nothing. This, let's go orchestration instead. So I wanted it to be the B section, twisted. All of a sudden we've gotten past that line of acceptance. Now we're all of a sudden into some new territory. So we have the woodwinds doing the, the kind of rhythmic motion. We have the strings. Carrying the familiar, the bottom line, the, the bass line and that melody line. And then we have the brass section, which is 
kind of giving us this more triumphant, here we are, now we're like kind of in the depths in this new territory thing. Let's listen to it all together and you can see it. Piano is going doo doo doo. New level. Come on, Jay Webb. Which is really a callback to the end of the guitar solo. It's, it's now in different. Just trying to weave these different things together at the end. I thought this was kind of an interesting move to end with as well is now the it, the song ends with an instrument that was never the focus of the song it was always a supporting role but now it's the thing that's lasted the longest i think there's something to that metaphorically as well with with the story of the song uh which is i thought was an interesting move but then it, it also kind of ends in a way that 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 feels kind of um unresolved you know, and uh, I think that's part of what this whole thing is. But this is this is a song that for me is really heavy to play for whatever reason. It carries a lot. There's some songs that just have this weight to them. And I remember finishing recording this guitar solo and just like setting down the guitar like, all right, I got that now. And, you know, just feeling the emotion and, and, and just like the thing of it and then adding this orchestration. It's going to be a really fun one to start playing live because it's gonna be a challenge. There's so much happening here. And to be able to get this same energy and thing happening, I think it's gonna take a lot of work from all of us to try to get it right. It might take a few reps to get it right, but ultimately I'm really excited to play this one live because I think I'll be able to express a different side of my guitar playing and just writing than I've been able to in a lot of other tunes. So, a little bit of a different tune than a lot of what many of you know me for, but I think it's important to express who I am as an artist and where I am when I am there. And it just felt like with this album, it was kind of the right time to do more guitar anthem sort of things and play more guitar solos and that sort of stuff. It was really fun to explore that space on this album, play a lot more guitar solos, and to feel like I really got good guitar solos. I, I feel like on this album, I have some of the best guitar solos I've ever played in my life. This one, I actually really feel the same way because I feel like it has a consistent, steady arc and story to it, but it also just gets, it really, it gets across the emotion and the feeling that I wanted for in this song. It's not the most flashy solo by any means, but it really tells the story that I want to tell. And that to me is the most important part of playing music. So thanks for hanging with us. We'll see you next time. Come see us on tour. I'm out on tour over the next year. I got a bunch of tour dates up. Check out my website. We'll see you out there. Thanks. Peace. Peace.